Gabi din na Alex, uh, ito pala oh. Hindi <laughs> ako nandinig dun ah. Ay nako. Salamat Alex ah. Kaya tama, nandito ka eh. <laughs> Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat sa tagapikinig ng Radyo Migrante sa Canada, sa US, sa Pilipinas. At kasama ko ngayong gabi si Tita Pet at si Alex. Magandang gabi. gabi. Magandang gabi, magandang umaga sa nakikinig sa Pilipinas. Oh, ay magandang umaga dyan. Oh, magandang umaga. At interesante pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi ah. Pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi ang mga tungkol sa ano ano ba yung kalusugan itong health ng uh, na pinag-uusapan natin. Kapag uh, uh, health bang pinag-uusapan, ibig ba sabihin niya na eh, sakit ka agad? Ganun ba? O meron pang ibang factors na nakaka-apekto dyan? Siguro ano? Mm-hmm. Meron tayo mga bisita, mga doktor. Doktor to ha. Ako. Kaya yung, kung may sakit ka, <laughs> pwede mo. Ikaw na, pwede mo itanong yung ano mo. Nag-cleanse na yun si ano eh. Kuya <laughs> Louie. Uh, 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 kaya, alam mo, interesante yung ano ha, yung pag-uusapan natin hmm. yung gabi ha. Halimbawa, yung, yung naisip ko lang, kapag ikaw ba eh mayaman eh, healthy ka na? O pag wala kang pera, hindi ka healthy? Ano kaya ibig sabihin, ano? Pwede natin hmm. i-touch yan mamaya, eh, no? Mami, pwede pag-usapan. At gusto ko rin pa alala sa mga nakikinig sa atin na African Liberation Month na yon dito sa CHRY 105.5 FM. And uh, pwede din natin siguro itanong kung oh. may mga connections, yung mga issues tungkol sa healthcare. Mm-hmm. Hindi lang para sa mga Pilipino at migrante, pero sa mga black Canadians din dito. Kasi um. alam man natin na yung mga Filipinos in Canada at yung mga blacks in Canada, mm-hmm. parang may similarities din tayo eh, sa social standing. Mm-hmm. 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 At, at saka yung sa kasaysayan, di ba? Kasaysayan, mm-hmm. napakalapit natin sa mga Oo. African, di ba? Yung sa African and Oo, black. Maganda yan. maganda yan. At saka, parang pwede rin naman tanungin na, ano, uh, kung di mo alam, kunyari, kung ano masustansya mga pagkain, paano mo rin matitsya kung ang binibili mo'y tama mm-hmm. para sa kalusugan ng iyong pamilya? Mm-hmm. Kahit sa sarili mong kalusugan, paano mo malalaman kung tama ba na mag-skip ka ng lunch para makatakbo ka dun sa second job mo? Eh, pa, paano kung wala kang pagkain? Oh, yun ang <laughs> <laughs> yun problema dun eh. Eh, kung wala kang pagkain o oh. wala kang pambili ng pagkain, oh. paano yun? Mm. Hindi ba? <laughs> Pero yan ho yung mga tanong na pwede nating linawin mamaya-maya lamang. Pero bago ho tayo magsimula, eh dumako muna tayo sa ating mga pangunahing mga balita. O oh, Alex. Okay, ano? so in our first news, uh, the independent probe on the mama uh, the mama ma masapano incident um, should include civilian ca- casualties says Karapatan. The police operation that took place on Sunday, January 25th on 2015 in Mama Sapano, I can't say it correctly, sorry, Betw- in Maguindanao, in Mindanao, between the Special Action Force and the F- of the Philippine National Police, which was allegedly joined by the uh, United States Army Special Forces and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the uh, Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or the BIFF, and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the MILF. Um, so this this happened on the 25th of January, just last week or two weeks ago. Originally, there was a mission there to serve warrants f- for arrest for high-ranking so-called terrorists. And it led to the deaths of 44 members of the SAF, 16 from the MILF and from the BIFF, and several civilians. Says Christina Palabay from Karapatan, uh, she's the Secretary General, quote, President B.S. Aquino's business as usual and callous attitude reared its ugly head once again, this time on, its, on his own men killed in this incident. He has shown the same ins- insensitivity to the victims of human rights violations under his rule and the same indifference to the victims of Typhoon Yolanda. In a way, we find similarities between the plight of the families of the victims of human rights violations and those of the members of the Special Action Forces, or the SAF, who were used as pawns in the U.S. Aquino's War on Terror. They, too, are victims of Aquino's puppetry to the interests of the United States government. End quote. Palabai sent, cites reports on the, of the role of the U.S. in intimidating, uh, initiating sorry, the operations with Aquino and suspended PNP chief Alan Purisis, Purisima, and by dangling the 5 million U.S. Uh, reward. 
And at the same time, Karapatan demanded that the independent investigation on the incident should also include the reported cases of civilians killed in the incident. Quote, the U.S. Aquino regime is accountable for these violations too. Um, and it's not enough to dish out a string of words, however kilometric that they are. The problem is, he spoke too much but said nothing. This is again from Christina Palabai from Karapatan. Um, so... I think we'll be talking about this more next week, di ba? Yeah, that will be a good topic next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, sa kaugnay ding balita, dyan sa Mama Sapano, uh, ito naman ay galing sa Gabriela Press Release. U.S. Forces Presence and Aquino Bak Passing in Mama Sapano Crisis Unacceptable, sabi ng Gabriela. Gabriela Women's Party Representative Emmy De Jesus, reacting to the speech delivered by President D.S. Aquino, said, that not only did the Commander-in-Chief absolve himself and other high officials from direct responsibility of the deaths and injury of Philippine National Police Troops, but also left unanswered questions about the role of the United States military in the incident. Hmm. Ang sabi ni De Jesus, panahon nang itanong ng ating kapulisan at kasundaluhan na sinasabak ng kanilang mga general kung ang kanilang ipinagbubwis ng buhay ay ang inambayan nga ba? O baka napapahamak lamang sila dahil sa manipulasyon ng dayuhang interes na nanghihimasok sa ating bansa, De Jesus proposed. The Gabriela Solon also said the many operational lapses and command chain short circuits that Aquino tried to reconstruct in his speech in order to pin blame on the Special Action Force commander seems so preposterous that the public opinion is right in strongly indicating Aquino is doing a massive cover-up. Quote from De Jesus again, Congressional inquiries into the matter must try to trace if the orders came from beyond the palace and lead to the U.S. VFA forces encamped in the Western Mindanao Command. For the sake of the bereaved families and their cries for justice, we have to address every party that may have a part in carrying out the fatal order to sacrifice Filipino lives to extract partisans that the U.S. is after. The Jesus ended. Nako, tingnan mo, no? Mm-hmm. Ang daming, ano, ang daming dilub yung nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Mm-hmm. Ito may isa pa, kakaiba naman na ito, no? Magnitude 3.4 quake hits North Cotabato. Sa Mindanao na naman ito. Mm-hmm. Kidapawan. Kidapawan mm-hmm. City. A magnitude 3.6 earthquake hit North Cotabato before dawn Saturday. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, FIBOX, reported on Sunday. The agency said the tectonic in origin quake with a depth of 2 kilometers occurred at 2.49 a.m. and its epicenter was traced at 12 kilometers east of Carmen, North Cotabato. FIBOX said no casualty or damage to property was reported. However, the quake was felt at intensity 3 in Carmen, North Cotabato, and intensity 2 in Cagayan de Oro City, Kidapawan City, and Cabaca, North Cotabato. The North Cotabato quake was the first of three tremors recorded in Mindanao on Saturday. At 6.51 a.m., a magnitude 3.3 quake occurred 75 kilometers east of General Luna, Surigao del Norte. It was tectonic in origin and had a depth of 16 kilometers. At 2.56 p.m., a magnitude 3.5 tremor was also monitored 32 kilometers east of Governor Generoso, Davao Oriental. Also tectonic in origin, it had a depth of 128 kilometers. Pilbox explains, the magnitude is the measurement of the energy release at the source of the earthquake, while intensity quantifies the strength of shaking produced by the tremor. And we ibig sabihin ng tectonic? No? Yung paggalaw ng ano, yung ng mga, mga lupa, plates. parang nagaano sila, no? Diba may mga plates sa sasamitan, oh, oh, ganun pa lang tectonic, ano? Tapos talagang mm-hmm. maraming nangyayari sa Pilipinas dito, mga oh, natural bakit, disasters na ito. Tataka ko, bakit palaging doon sa lugar na yun, no? <laughs> well, itong mga tectonic plates, talagang napatong yun sa Pilipinas. Uh-huh. Eh, kasi diba, Kala ko, artificial, barang ginagawa nila. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, may isa pang news, Alex, pwede mong basahin, ikaw naman siguro bumasa niyan. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, it's about the school system here in Toronto. As the Toronto District School Board of the TS- TDSB scrambles to name schools that are less than two-thirds full by Queen's Park counting method, many are asking how good that provincial yardstick is. Education Minister Liz Sandels has given the TDSB just weeks to spell out plans for closing schools over the next three years that are underused by the province's reckoning, which counts only full-time K-12 students, not extras such as childcare and parenting programs that may, shut, that may share space. 
Sandals ordered the TDSB to start offloading excess space after damning after a damning report by veteran educator Margaret Wilson criticized trustees for dragging their heels on school closings when 130 schools are considered less than 65% full. But when staff released the list of underused schools Wednesday, many warned that snap decisions based on utilitarian uh, utilization rate numbers alone are the basis of this. Quote, I don't think that tells the whole story, end quote, warned trustee Alma Malik. The minister herself and the premier have talked about uh, the schools as community hubs, and so many of the schools are being used in that way. But they appear near empty, according to the ministry's formula. According to trustee Jennifer Story, quote, Blake, Blake Street Junior Public High School is listed as 45% full, but we've just added French immersion, and it's now projected to grow up to 86%. Eastdale Collegiate may be only 32% full, but only the, but many of the students have been referred from larger schools that couldn't meet their needs. Story says, quote, "Some schools focus on life skills, but we lose this kind of uh, this kind of sight by strict adherence to the province's util- utilization guidelines." End quote. By an exasperated Sandals says that she recognizes that she realizes that being listed as underutilized doesn't necessarily mean it must close. But when Ontario schools are spending more than one billion dollars a year on underutilized uh, schools province-wide, quote, we need more detailed information about what their plans are by February the 13th. Okay, at yan po ang ating uh, mga balita at uh, makakausap po natin sa kabilang linya ang ating pong uh, unang uh, Uh, guest ngayong gabi. Si, uh, ang pangalan po niya ay si Dr. Vivian Estrella. Siya po ay isang doktor na nagtapos sa UP Manila uh, noong 2009. Uh, nagpractice po siya doon ng general medicine at noong 2012 po ay uh, buunta siya dito sa Canada. So tatlong taon po siya na nandito na sa Canada. At makakasaw po natin siya ngayong gabi para pag-usapan yung topic natin. Ano bang titulin nito Alex? Doctor, doctor, <laughs> am I sick? Ayan, parang uh-huh. ano. So magandang uh, gabi, Dr. Bibian. Magandang gabi. Magandang gabi po sa lahat ng mga listeners natin. Ah, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Ah, kasama ko po dito si Tita Pet at saka si Alex para magbigay din ng mga tanong sa inyo. Magandang, magandang gabi, gabi Dr. Magandang gabi po. Oh, unang tanong. Siguro uh, simulan na natin. Uh, actually nag-usap na tayo kanina, Doktor, ano? Pinag-uusapan kasi natin, ano ba 'yung mga ano, primary factors na uh, that shape the health of uh, uh, individuals or particularly Canadians. Siguro tayo mga immigrants, mga Pinoy, ano ba itong mga uh, mga nagko-contribute sa kalusugan ng ano ng isang uh, individual. Uh, uh, katulad din ba tinanong namin kanina kapag ikaw ba ay uh, Uh, mababa ang sweldo for mm-hmm. example ay uh, paano in, uh, malusog ka ba uh, kakayanin mo bang maging malusog kung ikaw ba ay babae mas malusog ka ba kaysa sa mga lalaki mga ganyan so ito mga tanong na ito paano paano mo ito ba anong anong comment niyo dito doktora okay so medyo maganda yung point na ni raise mo no um, yun nga marami yung mga social determinants of health natin so iba-iba kasi yan merong Uh, merong sinasabi ang WHO na basic na mga yung World Health Organization na basic na mga social determinants of health kagaya nga ng nabanggit mo yung edukasyon um, kasama na rin dyan kung babae o lalaki, yung gender um, importante rin yung mga yung kung may trabaho or wala. Ngayon dito naman sa Canada, may, ay, may ginawa silang study at nagkaroon sila ng mga uh, mga listahan kung ano yung mga social determinants of health dito sa Canada. So, kagaya rin ng mga listahan sa WHO, halos pareho lang. Yun nga lang, may mga konti silang dinagdag, um, maliban dun sa edukasyon, sa income natin o sa kita natin. Um, kasama na rin dyan yung mga uh, working conditions natin sa trabaho, no? Kung healthy o hindi. Uh, lalo na, karamihan sa atin dito sa Canada, uh, most likely yung mga nag-uumpisa pa lang minsan sa factory sila um, nagbo-work. Mm-hmm. So, yun, isang um, factor din yun. Um, isa pa, yung housing, kung saan tayo nakatira, yung komunidad na tinitirhan natin, may mga, uh, yung access rin natin sa health services, mm-hmm. kung um, meron na tayong OHIP, yun, importante yun dito sa Canada. 
ayun na nga, nabanggit mo rin gender, kung babae o lalaki. At yun nga siguro specific lang ito sa Canada, no? Kasi itong listahan nga na to nagbabase ito dun sa study na ginawa nila. Pero kasama rin yung mga aboriginal status. Kasi dito nga sa Canada, alam naman natin medyo yung ibang aboriginals, medyo isolated sila. Mm-hmm. So yun yung mga, uh, mga social determinants of health na makaka-apekto nga sa paano tayo nag-decide tungkol sa ating kalusugan. Pero, pero bago ko uh, iba to kay Tita Pet yung uh, susunod na tanong. So ibig sabihin kawawa-kawawa talaga ang Pilipinas kasi lahat ito wala ta- walang walang ano, walang hindi ito nangyayari sa atin, no? Yung 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 halimbawa yung uh, health services, very poor ang health services sa Pilipinas. Kung halimbawa ko kumpara mo sa Canada, may ganun ba tayong pagtingin pag kinumpara natin? Ah, uh, oh, may tama Gusto ko lang yun. i-connect 'yon dahil uh-huh. uh, sa Pilipinas hindi ba pa, kalimitan maraming namamatay na lang kasi nga very poor ang health services nila. Yes, Kahit nga yung mga bahay, right, no? pinagdedemolish yung mga bahay, so yung mga ka- mga bata ano, hindi sila makapag-aral, hindi sila malusog ang kanilang pag-iisip, hindi ba? Mm-hmm, tama 'yan. Um, nung ako nga yung experience ko dun sa atin, um, nag-intern kasi ako sa Philippine General Hospital. So, ito yung pinakamalaking uh, public hospital sa atin, di ba? So, karamihan talaga halos lahat ng mga pasyente namin, yun yung mga walang-wala talaga. Na kahit kami nga mismo na mga intern or yung mga resident din namin, kami mismo nagsishell out kami minsan ng pera para lang mabigyan natin ng gamot or minsan yung mga gamit para uh, masuportahan yung mga pasyente natin, mga dextrose, kahit nga minsan mga syringe kulang-kulang talaga tayo sa public hospitals natin. Mm-hmm. So, yun din nga yung medyo nakakalungkot nga doon kasi hindi ito na bibigyan ng pansin yung health sa, sa atin sa Pilipinas. Kasi nga, akala nila pag health ang pinag-uusapan o yung kalusugan, uh, para sa kanila is only kung wala tayong sakit, di ba? Mm-hmm. Pero hindi kasi nare-realize ng, hindi lang ng mga Pilipino, kundi pati yung mga hindi lang yung mga maliliit na tao sa atin pero kahit mismo yung mga uh, opisyal natin sa gobyerno hindi nila uh, natutukuyan ng pansin yung health kasi akala nga nila kung walang sakit malusog na pero hindi nila nare-realize na yun nga maraming mga factors na nakakapag-apekto nito like yun nga yung nambangit mo health services na walang wala talaga sa atin yung kung wala ka wala kang insurance kung hindi ka pupunta sa hospital wala talagang mangyayari So, Doktor, ang nakikita ko pong natutumbok natin dito na problema ay yung kakayahan ng tao na maka-afford ng ano, health services. Ano? Ibig sabihin, tra- may trabaho ba yung tao? So, ang, ang, ang nakikita kong ano dito rin na pagkukumpara siguro ng kalagayan ng mga workers dito na Pilipino at saka yung workers sa atin. No? Pa, uh, yung mga workers dito, uh, may mga factors din na nag i doon sa kanilang uh, kalusugan na dahil sa kanilang trabaho. Mm-hmm. As, ang binanggit nyo nga sa faktorya, no? iba yung kondisyon doon. Yun din mga nagtatrabaho sa loob ng bahay, iba rin ang kondisyon. So, um, kung ikukumpara mo naman doon sa mga nagtatrabaho din sa atin, iba-iba rin ang mga kondisyon. Ano? Pero, uh, ang ibig sabihin, dito at least merong mga Uh, kunyara, EI na nakakatulong doon sa mga tao kung meron na silang uh, uh, permanent residency, mga ganon. No? Tapos, pero uh, yung mga kondisyon ng trabaho ay napaka grabe pa rin ang ano, influensya doon sa kalusugan mo. Ano po yung nakikita nyo na ano, uh, examples ng mga ganon dito sa Canada? Uh, so far, since nag-work ako ngayon, ay tatrabaho ko ngayon bilang medical assistant. If yung aside from yung mga nakikita kong mga common na yun nga, nagtatrabaho sa factory, ang iba rin siguro karamihan sa atin, syempre, um, immigrant tayo dito, nag adjust pa rin tayo. So, nandun pa rin yung stress. Mm-hmm. Pag, lalo na sa mga bagong dating na ang dami nilang iniisip, yung mga iba, yung mga lalo na yung uh, primary uh, workers sa family, iniisip nila kung kailangan nila magpadala ng pera, mm-hmm. yung iniisip nila san sila, san, sino yung ma, ma, mapupuntahan nila kung kailangan, sila, kailangan nila ng tulong dahil yung iba nga dito sa atin, mga Pilipino, walang kamag-anak. Um, mm-hmm. 
may iba rin dyan na ang maraming anak, so may, lalo na dito sa atin na medyo mahirap na iwanan lang basta-basta, ba diba? Yung mga mm -hmm. anak natin, so isa rin yun sa mga stress. So isa rin yun sa factor. I think yung stress na stress sa uh, trabaho, kasi nag a tayo, iba yung kultura dito kumpara sa atin. Uh, stress sa personal na buhay, kung malayo ka sa pamilya mo, iniisip mo sila kung paano magpadala. Um, isa rin yun, I think sa 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 aside from yung yung kita kung bakit um, minsan hindi tayo nakaka hindi natin na tutuunan ng pansin yung kalusugan natin mm -hmm. Alex mm -hmm. tanong ko man ay itong kusan ano balikan natin ito actually pinag-uusapan na natin itong mga bagong dating uh, ang alam ko dito sa Canada itong mga bagong dating na mga Pilipino at iba pang mga migrants karamihan sa kanila walang family doctor at karamihan sa kanila, hindi nila alam kung paano i-access or even what the different services are. Um, di, meron ka bang mga advice para sa kanila? Paano ba, ano ba yung mga main advice na mabibigay mo sa mga bagong dating lang dito? What should they do uh, to help them access the healthcare system? Okay, magandang tanong yan. Um, so, sa mga, um, I think lahat naman tayo alam natin na pagbagong dating after 3 months kung dito tayo sa Ontario after 3 months pa natin makukuha yung OHIP natin. So meron mga actually para dun sa wala pang OHIP may mga services actually mga community clinics na um, open na magtingin ng mga pasyente na walang OHIP. So um, I think kailangan nilang makipag-access uh, dun sa makipag-network sa mga Um, yung mga office for mga newly uh, newcomers to Canada mm -hmm. kasi sila yung may alam kung sa ang komunidad merong ganong mga services um, isa pa dyan siguro kung yung in terms na nabanggit mo na mahirap kumuha ng family doctor mm -hmm. um, actually tama ka dyan mahirap nga talaga kumuha ng family doctor lalo na kung um, syempre gusto natin na yung doctor din natin is ka ka pareho din natin na kapwa Pilipino mm -hmm. or ganun rin naman sa iba-ibang lahi gusto rin nila, kalahi rin nila so I think ang um, pinakamagandang paraan dyan it's either um, kung word of mouth pwedeng pakiusapan kung may pakilala ka na family doctor niya um, kung pwede niyang pakiusapan na i-enroll ka rin sa uh, clinic ng family doctor na yon pero kung wala, meron dito sa Ontario, meron silang pwedeng actually tawagan na hotline. Mm -hmm. Although yun nga, yung mismong um, ministry ang pipili sa'yo, ang magbibigay sa'yo kung kanino ka mapupunta na family doctor. Mm -hmm. Yun nga lang din, may waiting list din dahil marami rin tumatawag. So, mabibigay mo ba yung number? Hindi ka makakapili rin. Yun hahanapin ko. Okay. okay. Yan yun. <laughs> Tap, time. May isa pa akong tanong. Para naman sa mga ano, yung mga, uh, either yung mga TNT na mm -hmm. andito pa sa Canada, may, ano ba yung options nila para maka-access ng healthcare? At paano din para sa mga ano, yung mga temporary foreign workers na Pilipino dito, nakaka-access din sila ng healthcare dito or hindi? Um, ang alam ko kasi for the temporary um, health workers, uh, covered in ideally covered din sila na parang pag mga permanent resident, di ba? Mayroon din silang time to uh, na after a certain months, eh, pwede na rin silang, let's say, dito sa atin, OHIP. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although hindi ako aware sa kung sa ibang provinces, pero alam ko kahit temporary, uh, kahit um, fo, ano ka lang, working visa, pwede ka pa rin mag-access nung um, publicly funded na uh, healthcare. For yung mga TNT naman, yung Uh, yun nga yung mga hindi pwedeng mag-ohip uh, meron nga mga resources sa komunidad na pwede nilang puntahan, may mga clinic actually para doon na kahit walang mga, walang mga health uh, insurance ay pwedeng pumunta doon, yun nga lang din uh, medyo mag, mag, magtsatsaga tayo kasi may pila rin siya, waiting list din at um, yung iba nga uh, matagal rin yung hintayan pero, Doktor, may follow-up lang ako dyan. Ano? Ang ganda ng health services na sa atin dito, hindi ba? Sabihin, mm -hmm. hindi, pero bakit ang, e, eto sa experience lang natin na didinig, ano? bakit ang mga Pilipino mukhang yata, katulad ko, tinatamad ako punta sa doktor? Mm -hmm. Kaya kung magpabunot ng ipi, eh, libre na nga. Magpalinis, <laughs> di ba? May mga benefits na tayong ganyan, pero tinatamad ako 
kailangan ko pang <laughs> bakit bakit tayo nasanay sa ganun sa tingin niyo gusto ko kasi iugnay ito dun sa kalagayan kalagay natin sa Pilipinas ano isa yeah. yun na gusto kong iugnay na gusto yeah. sana huminang komento sa inyo pangalawa kung ang mga Pilipino ay isa sa pinakamasayang mamamayan sa buong daigdig despite dun sa kahirapan natin sa tingin niyo ba ito ay ano rin uh, magandang senyales na malusog pa rin tayo yung ganong ano pun- punto na di ba ang saya eh tayo number 2 yata tayo sa pinakamasaya di ba uh-uh. eh ang dami uh-huh. nating problema sa atin uh-uh. so sige so sa una mong tanong dyan so siguro yung kultura kasi natin um, sanay tayo dahil nabanggit nyo nga wala tayong mga libreng health services sa atin di ba uh-huh. kung libre man limited lang so medyo I think sa personal na experience ko na nakapagtingin ako ng mga pasyente doon ang una kasi nilang concern talaga ay yung bayad, di ba? Yung takot tayo na baka mahal yung um, mababayaran natin pag pumunta tayo sa doktor, pag may reseta, mahal ang gamot, kung may mga test na ipapagawa, mahal din. So kaya dinidelay natin yung pagpapatingin sa doktor not unless may mga simptomas na talaga tayong nararamdaman o kaya minsan grabe na. So ngayon siguro dito, since ganun yung mentality natin, nung pagdating punta natin dito sa Canada, ganun, parang nasanay na tayo na ganun. So not unless um, may nararamdaman tayo, hindi tayo magpapatingin. Mm-hmm. Isa pang factor siguro rin dyan kasi tayong mga Pilipino, masisipag talaga, kumakayot tayo para ma-provide natin yung mga pangangailangan natin tsaka ng pamilya natin. So syempre, takot tayo na kung malaman natin na may sakit tayo, kailangan natin mag-leave, kailangan mag-time off from work, which is ang, ang equivalent ng walang trabaho is wala ka rin kita. So yun din yung isang factor nun. Gusto ko lang ikabit, uh, doktora, yung kalagayan naman ng mga ano, domestic workers dito. Ano, dahil ang problema naman doon, wala silang time para magpunta sa mga ano. Mm-hmm. Sa ma- kasi iniisip din nila Uh, pa- saan kami kukuha ng, ng time? Pagkatapos, ang uh, iniisip din nila kung meron silang uh, dalawang jobs, for example. Saan mm-hmm. sila rin uh, hahanap ng ano pa, ng paraan mm-hmm. an, para makapunta sa doktor? Hindi lang yan, kundi yung iniisip nila lang nahihiya din sila dahil iniisip nila hindi pa sila accepted talaga dito sa Canadian society. Kasi may ganun din na ano eh, pa, na pakiramdam yung mga bagong dating dito at yung mga hindi pa permanent residents na hindi sila tanggap. At tapos yung, yung mga social services parang nahihiya silang puntahan yan dahil nga yung feeling na hindi sila tanggap. Ganun. Okay, oo. Ma- ano mm-hmm. rin yan? Meron nga, yun nga, tama ka, may mga iba nga na nahihiya. Mm-hmm. Um, yung iba naman uh, Ayun nga, nahirap. Aside from nahihiya, let's say kung magpapatingin sila sa hindi Pilipino, Mm-mm. nahihiya rin silang mag, ano, magsalita ng Ingles. At minsan, nahihirapan rin silang i-relay yung simptomas nila Mm-mm. sa wikang Ingles. So yun Mm-mm. din, I think, yung mga isa ring factor kung bakit din minsan na, ayaw rin natin magpatingin. Na, unless kalahi natin, kapwa Pilipino yung Oo. doktor natin. Okay. Uh, doktora, maraming maraming salamat. Napaksi, napakaiksi ng oras natin. Pero uh, maraming pong salamat sa inyong uh, uh, sa ating talakayan. Uh, konting mensahe bago namin kayo bitawan para sa susunod pa naming uh, guest. Doktora? Okay. O, so, bago, bago sa susunod yung guest, ito ang number kung saan pwede nilang tawagan para kung kailangan nilang ma-refer sila sa local doctor doon sa komunidad nila. No? So, ito ang tinatawag na Healthcare Connect. Mm-hmm. Dito lang yan sa Ontario po. Um, so, ang number po niyan ay 1-800-445-1822. Mm-hmm. 1-822. Opo. Okay. Maraming salamat, Doktora, at mabuhay ka. Ano man po. Maraming salamat. salamat po. Thank po. Yan po si Doktora. Nakausap natin ngayon. At uh, uh, ang ganda ng diskusyon natin. No? Pero bago tayo, ano, so, tatawagan naman natin isang guest. No? May isa pa tayong guest. Uh, pero magpatugtog muna tayo. You're still listening to Radio Migrante, your leading source for diversity. Pwede rin ho kami nyo kaming pakinggan sa Bell 5973 uh, o sa Rogers Digital Cable 945 o mag-tune in po kayo sa chry.fm uh, or tunein.com. 
Uh, magpatugtog muna tayo ng isang musika habang uh, tayo ay uh, naghihintay sa isa pa nating guest. You're still listening to Radio Migrata on CHRY 105.5 FM, your reading source for diversity. Ang ating pong isa pang uh, guest ngayong gabi ay si Highwell Toscano. Siya po ay coordinator ng Hepatitis C Ethnocultural Education and Outreach Program. Yan po ay programa ng KTCA TIE na isang source for update and by up to date unbiased information about HIV and hepatitis C they connect people living with HIV or hepatitis C at risk communities healthcare providers and community organizations with the knowledge resources and expertise to reduce transmission and improve quality of life yan po si Highwell Toscano magandang gabi Highwell Good evening, Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for being on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so ang ating mga katanungan para sa Hi, Will. I think uh, we have to speak in English. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Will. What are you? What do you think are the primary uh, social determinants for health for Filipinos here in uh, Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it, at least in your it, area, yeah, like this in your area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> your favorite? <laughs> well, it's a it's a really interesting question, but a lot of it depends on access to healthcare mm-hmm. and mm. the living situations of people, and a lot of that banks on their employment situation. Mm-hmm. And it's um, I think a lot. So much emphasis is important on getting people into good employment or getting them into any job here, but um, the way that people hold on to it or make sacrifices for it too mm-hmm. can affect their health as well. So it's um, it's the one thing often holding up a household, but often the thing that could be weighing most on their health as well in terms of stress, having the time to actually take care of yourself. So mm-hmm. you need the money, but you don't have the time anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I see that talked about in a lot of the communities that I work in. I do health outreach across um, a number of immigrant communities and it's mm-hmm. it's interesting because there's different needs that I see. Um, it's also another thing where because of uh, work availability, people are just ending up in areas that don't necessarily have services that understand them or are very accessible. They might have to go a long way to find things. And as a uh, Um, especially as caregivers and through that program as well, we're going to see a wide dispersal of people um, outside of the urban centers too, and that's something to consider. I think um, it's African Liberation Month here at uh, CHRY 105.5. So maybe mm-hmm. this is a good point also to, because you brought up different communities um, mm-hmm. here in Toronto. So can you maybe link, are there any similarities between the Filipino community, the Filipino immigrant community, and other communities, or even the black community in particular here in Toronto? Are there any similarities in their healthcare uh, issues? Um, well, across the board, immigrants arrive here healthier, and over time, their health gets worse. Mm-hmm. Um, the specific issues facing each community, um, in terms of what, especially what poverty looks like in the historical uh, mm-hmm. situation of different groups, um, something specifically that I've seen come out of studies at York is that. Filipinos are specifically downwardly mobile compared to other immigrant groups. So um, when I embarked upon doing health work, 
um, the resources that I saw that I could draw from were very different in each community. So um, for South Asian or Chinese folks, I saw large health no networks, legal clinics, councils um, doing these things. Um, within the black community, especially among HIV, um, I've been seeing a push to organize nationally. Um, all of the ethno-specific uh, AIDS work within the country actually happens in Toronto. Those are some of the only funded and strong organizations carrying on, and they have to address the very specific needs of each community, and it's especially around what stigma looks like uh, for each of them and how they handle uh, illness, mm -hmm. how they deal with grief. Um, those are very specific differences that I see across different groups, but something common is silence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the who organization, uh, the World Health Organization, uh, mm -hmm. s uh, speaks of different ways in which you can uh, pressure governments and policymakers to enact health supporting public policy. And one of this is education on health. So, um, what can you say about that? Because you're in, in this program about uh, yeah. public information. Yeah. So in doing outreach about a specific health issue, a communicable disease, I understood that we couldn't just talk about this disease in isolation because mm -hmm. it wasn't top of mind for people in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. So we usually spend just a whole hour talking about immigrant health and their specific situations. And often for folks, it's the first conversation that they're outright having about this. And it's it stirs up a lot of things for folks. Um, and we talk about the social determinants of health health literacy, um, talk about, talking about being your own advocate within health settings. Um, it's a, health is something, uh, we talk about settlement stress and the priorities that people have in their lives, and health is something that's taken for granted until you don't have it anymore. It's a resource that's drawn from and not necessarily replenished <laughs> um, until the tank is empty. So in terms right. of like doing health education and awareness, um, mm -hmm. it's a powerful tool to get people to think about mm -hmm. not just surviving, mm -hmm. but actually building, doing things that are sustainable, mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily having to sacrifice all the time, which I think is something that is, uh, that's reinforced, mm -hmm. is common within our communities, um, happens for a lot of families. Mm-hmm. So if you had one message or one thing that you wanted to say uh, to new Filipino migrants, new migrants here, what would you want to tell them? Um, because I know you do a lot of these public seminars, but what's the one thing you think is most important for them to know? Oh, um, that people are worth prevention, that people are worth taking care of before there's a problem. And it's a lot easier to try to do a little bit and support each other bit by bit rather than deal with an emergency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in terms uh, of advice, do you, is there a number or some someone you think uh, they should get in touch with if they need help? Um, I believe it's important to try and have a family doctor. Mm -hmm. um, I, have, I have had my first family doctor at the age of 30 <laughs> in, this, in this very city, so it's uh, it's common to have a very mixed uh, relationship with healthcare. Um, Depending on what you're facing, there's a lot of info lines and services here that are specific. Um, the best thing that you can do is probably support someone to get tested for something if they're worried about it, or find a little bit more information when someone brings up something and learn how to support them around it, um, especially when dealing with stigma around things. I, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know, for example, for that last thing you said um, about getting tested, there are anonymous clinics, right? Maybe you yeah. can say something about that. Like if people are afraid of, uh, you know, their name being given th to the public or something. You know, sometimes they're here, uh, you know, the term TNT, they're here um, past their uh, visa, etc. Mm -hmm. Or they're afraid of something else. Talk a little bit yeah. about that. So I'm interested in how um, Toronto as a sanctuary city is going to play out in public practice as people without status or documentation are supposed to have access to education and essential services like healthcare. Um, a catch-all for these things is community health centers across the province. Um, there's at least one in every region. Um, and I know at services that um, they can be a little strange. There's a lot of demand for them um, that people need as well, but those are a great place to walk into where without a no-hip card, 
um, or documentation, you can actually have access to primary care there as well. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. Hi, Will. I'm sorry. But unfortunately, we don't have enough time. So maybe next time we'll have a longer discussion yes, on this. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And thank you for uh, gracing our show. Thank you for uh, May I, being may with I say us tonight. One thing? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, in terms of managing healthcare, I think there's a lot of interest in having us as. Um, for meeting an economic and labor need within the country without necessarily taking responsibility for people's bodies. And it's really problematic to view humans as resources. Um, And temporary foreign work essentially does this to people's lives. And I think that programs that are cautiously shaped around cost-effective analysis of people's bodies are really destructive, and we're seeing it play out in families and in our health currently. So it's... um, it's a call for caring to think about current labor policy and migration now, because um, I know that generations before the current situation had settled and assimilated in a certain way. And I mm. think you asked me about a primary message. I think my primary message is to care about what's going on now and to think of the, the policy and the programming that's actually affecting people's health currently. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Hywell. Yes, yes, thank thank you. you. A great message. Thank you. Thank you. Please take care. Good night, man. And now, let's have uh, Tita Pet for the synthesis. Um, okay, ito ho ating synthesis for uh, this uh, show. Certain living conditions are necessary for good health, and government can provide its citizens with them and also improve the quality of these conditions through the enactment of public policies. Yung World Health Organization po, or WHO, ay nagbibigay na kung ano ang mga systemic conditions na ito. Largely, social and economic factors po ito at tinatawag silang the social determinants of health. Yan po ay nag include ng number one, income and income distribution. Uh, ang big sabihin yung kita at sweldo at ang tamang distribution nito sa mamamayan. Uh, ikalawa, early life, mga kondisyon sa simula ng buhay at sa paglaki ng isang tao. Ikatlo, education. Ikaapat, housing. Ang pamamahay po ay isa rin importanteng factor dyan. Ikaalimas, food security o seguridad sa pagkain o accessibility to, uh, to nutritious food. Ikaanim, employment and working conditions o trabaho at kondisyon sa trabaho. Susunod po ay unemployment and job security o mga kondisyon pagkanawalan ng trabaho at seguridad sa trabaho. Uh, susunod ay social safety net seguridad na may maasahang tulong na social services. At ang social inclusion po ay ex- and exclusion ay importante din o ang pagtanggap ng lipunan sa isang tao. Ang uh, ika ika pinal po na kailangan ay ang accessibility of health services o ang um, uh, accessibility accessibility ng serbisyo ang pangkalusugan. Alam po natin na maraming mga nasyon na nakakapagdigay ng mga social determinants nito. Kamukha po ng Sweden, uh, Denmark, Norway. Uh, ang Canada po naman ay meron ding ano, uh, time na nagbigay din ng mga social uh, pro- provisions na yan. Ang sabi ng WHO na nag- naging Uh, lagard po ang Canada tungkol sa mga ito. Kaya ngayon, ang mga ways para ating ma-improve ma- ang ating mga kondisyon para sa ating kalusugan ay yung una, edukasyon, uh, pansariling edukasyon at saka action din. Uh, kung tatanungin natin ang ating mga representatives kung ano ang ginagawa nila tungkol sa mga issues at saka ang mga public health units din at mga disease associations ay tanungin din natin at i-urge natin mga gobyerno at policy makers na mag-create at mag-implement ng health promoting public policies. So, ang pinakalas po ay ang ating mga unionizing ng mga workers dahil ang mga union po ang nagbibigay ng maraming kondisyon na promoting sa ating kalusugan. Yan po ang ating mga Rekomendasyon 
Ayan, salamat Tita Pet. Napakaganda ng kanyang synthesis no, ang tagal eh. Pero <laughs> tagal ah. Pero maganda, no? maganda yung synthesis. Kaya talaga. Wala, wala tayong oo. pulso ngayon gabi ano, pero dahil ang ipapalit natin sa pulso, dahil celebration ngayon. Ano ang tawag doon Alex, sabi mo? It's African, African Liberation, Liberation. Month here at THRY so, 105.5. Yes. At aalayan natin sila ng tula mula po sa akdaan to a sojourner na sinulat ni Tita Pet at yung isang tula naman na sinulat ni uh, Lingling Claver. Ito po yun. In the subway, it is darker and later than the afternoon. We sit across each other with an angle of limp light which we bridge and on it we meet. Across layers of silences you know very well, so well that their keenly embroidered fabrics soothe you, even in the wind-ruled deserts of your sleep. So well that their ancient colors descend from the mountain peaks where memory began to your trees and fibrous body shaped and spent from the day's work. And also because you have often had no choice but look from dust to windows where you and pain have perched together like able sojourners to gaze at the wind-borne currents and tides. Across these layers and dust to windows You can look at me, your sister now, and with eyes declare that somehow signals are clear. You don't look away. And so my eager memory sketches you, who are also a welcome stranger, who have found joy in being human through another's non-foreign eyes, non-foreign face, non-force, non-foreign body. You who can dive into the deep inside the eyes. Your daughter looks up from her slumber, one eye wondering at my look, but the other lost in her own deserts of aloneness, of strangeness. She must be told There are heroes who shine with steadfast beauty, who have conquered the cliffs and parched lands, wrested victory away from the scornful winds of change. They are mirrors to the inner truth that the strong heart's greatness transcends man-made terrors and disasters. We know we consider her future. As we look into each other's lives, we know there are enormous roots greater than us, entangling us, reaching out for our blood, for the stems and buds of our integrity. But we know their stranglehold grows weaker as ancient spirits grow in wisdom together. Yes, even here, where the city has jungles, strewn with sharp and cruel teeth of modern lives. And so we cannot go each her way, weeping, beating drums dolorously into the distance, We will use sturdy bridges of truth to cross all distances and abysses. Prepare the soil, very like our ancients, and build terraces to protect the land where a new and greater world will grow. At yan po ang napakagandang tula ni Tita Pet. Tita Pet, announcement na tayo, Alex. Okay. Ang first announcement po natin. 
Ikinalulungkot ng buong Radyo Migrante Collective ang hindi inaasahang pagpanaw ni Father Greg Sevillo. Si Father Sevillo po ang guest natin noong nakaraang dalawang linggo na nagpaliwanag hinggil sa tungkulin ng simbahan, lalo na sa mga migranteng manggagawa. Ang talakayang iyon ay naglinaw din sa mga issue hinggil sa pagdating ni Pope Francis. Bilang pagpupugay sa kay Father Greg Sevillo na bago pumanaw ay at siyang katawan ng The Congregation of Filipino Catholic Missionaries, Canada, pamuli naming babasahin ang tulang kas- mapayapang kasama ng pangalawang aklat ng akdaan mula po sa Amin, isang mapayapang paglalakbay patungo sa lumalang Father Greg Sevillo. Okay, so up next, uh, the Filipino Workers Network in the Toronto and York Region Labor Council invites you to an opening to an evening of networking and gathering of Filipino-Canadian union members. This is held at OPSU, at the OPSU Centre, 31 Wellesley Street East. This is on February the 21st between 6 and 11 p.m. Uh, for tickets, call 416-828-0441. That's 416-828-0441. At dadno nagtatapos ang Radyo Migrante. Pasalamat tayo sa dalawa nating guests kay Dr. Vivian uh, Estrellas at kay Highwell Toscano. And up next is Troy Green. Marami pong salamat and good Magandang night po. Gabi Magandang po gabi po sa inyong lahat. Only hand gestures to my colleagues. Anong yari? <coughs> Sana. Parang nagkaroon tayo ng, ano, ah, ng technical difficulties po, kaya... Nagsalita ka lang. Ito, kaya ako nagsasalita ako, nagsasalita dito. Ito na po ito. Pasensya na po tayo. Ito po ang huling awitin para po sa...